historic football program, rabid, rabid fan base, unique environment, culture, tradition, pageantry, and a bigger fan base than you may understand right now. Welcome, welcome into West Virginia Mountaineers Live, our initial show right here on our new channel, West Virginia, the voice of college football. And the guy that's going to make it all happen right here is the golden blue dude. Hey, man, how's it going tonight? Uh, it's going great, man. Uh, like we've talked about earlier, this couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, internet finally came today, so high-quality video, no portrait mode. I'm ready to go, man. I'm excited. You're clear, clear yes. and crisp. That's looking what I'm talking good, about. Looking good, looking good. All right, everyone, line up there. And leave your comments, your questions right there in the live chat for us. Uh, we're going to be here for about an hour talking West Virginia football. Plan to do it each and every Friday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. So mark it down, lock it in, get on over to our new West Virginia channel and subscribe right there. Head on over there. You can just search Voice of College Football West Virginia. You should be able to find it. We'll leave the link in the uh, live chat as well. You know what? A lot of people are going to be watching us tonight that aren't fans of West Virginia football, but want to see us grow, whether that's a golden blue dude, myself and our platform. And if you love college football, still subscribe. We ask that you still subscribe. Uh, but certainly if you are a Mountaineer fan, it is a must. It is a must. Have so absolutely. So I'm looking back at my preseason prediction for West Virginia football, and I said eight and four. Uh, I went eight and four. I went six and three in the conference. They came up a couple games shy. And um, before we get to this recent recruiting class that just came in uh, pretty strong here in the last couple of days, let's look back at the season and, you know, what went right, what went uh, wrong. Well, what went right was uh, despite losing a ton of talent on defense, we didn't take a massive step backwards. A slight step, but last year was an elite defense. So we had a pretty good defense this year. Now, what went wrong? Our offensive line, that's what went wrong. Um, our running game, almost non-existent. Letty Brown went over 100 yards four times. And we won all four of those games, but only four times. Last year... He went over all but one game, I believe. So it was our offensive line, and then that translated over to our quarterback, Jarek Deggy. Um, he gets a lot of he gets a lot of flack for for what happened this year, but it was not his fault. Uh, just go back and look at last year. Uh, had a great season. When you give Jarek Deggy time, he's actually a pretty good quarterback. The problem was he didn't have enough time and no run support and uh, the drop ball bug was going around again, our, our wide receivers dropping too many balls. So offensive line, uh, young but talented, hopefully another offseason together and more depth with that is going to help, and running game. And even though Letty Brown is gone, uh, we're going to talk about what running backs are coming in, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, so besides Letty Brown making his decision to offer the NFL draft, is there anybody else out there that we're going to find out about here in the next two to three weeks that's on the fence? That I haven't heard anything. Uh, the only the only one that I've heard about is Lady Brown. Now I did hear uh, that Winston Wright has actually decided to come back next year, so that's a plus. But as far as somebody being on the fence or possibly uh, sitting out the ball, haven't heard anybody else's name besides Lady Brown. So, but I'll keep up on that for sure. Uh, and, and, you know, it will hurt to an extent not having Letty Brown. But I'll tell you what, Tony Mathis was looking good those those last three games. He He's looking like a pretty good running back. And like I mentioned before, our running game wasn't all that great the entire season anyway, so we're kind of used to that. But, you know, it would have helped to have uh, a rusher capable of going over 100 yards. I think, I think Mathis is capable, but – we did trust Lady Brown more, so that will hurt just a bit. 
National Signing Day uh, on a Wednesday, December 15th. So just about the entire class for most of the teams across college football. It's a little bit different story for some of the teams that brought in new head coaches out at Oregon. Only seven signees at this point. They're going to have a class of 20. So they got a lot of work to do. Maybe they did some today. I just checked that last night. Did some Oregon uh, work last night and posted a segment, but uh, they're a team in particular, as you might imagine. But for West Virginia, that's, uh, I believe, 18 commits. It's the 32nd ranked class in the country, number five in the Big 12. You're feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, and actually, if you count the transfers that we got, that's a total of 20 commits, and we're actually in the top 30. Um, so you'll see it. You'll see different rankings, whether they count the transfers or not. I, I like to count the transfers because they're going to they're they're going to contribute. So uh, to me, it makes sense to count the transfers, even though they're not you know from a high school. It's still recruiting. You're still getting them. So we have 20 commits. Uh, we had a few surprises uh, last second names that, to be quite honest with you, it's hard to pronounce. But from what I'm hearing, uh, some some good some good last minute pickups. So I'm pretty excited. We kind of rebounded. Uh, from the two big losses, uh, and those were running back Justin Williams. He was a four-star recruit, one of our one of our higher ranked recruits. Um, he went back on the fence and ultimately signed with Tennessee. And then, of course, we also lost uh, wide receiver Kevin Thomas. He was a three-star, and as of right now, he's still unsigned. So West Virginia could still grab him. Uh, we'll see what happens with him, but um, yeah, those were our two biggest losses. So picking up those. Uh, last minute transfers and uh, recruits was a big deal because I think we dropped down to like 36 or 37 at one point. Good to see the real MVPs here. Good luck against Minnesota. Joey, good to see you, man, as That's well, good. of course. And uh, Dylan, let's go, Mountaineers. Dylan, John. big golden blue dude supporter. Appreciate you, bud. Nice. We got uh, John here as well. It's West Virginia's school that burns couches. Yes, but it's actually illegal in Morgantown. And you know what? I'm I'm going to make a promise here, and I'll do it on my regular channel too, Golden Blue Dude. Uh, if West Virginia beats Minnesota, I'll do a couch burning video. How about that? Couch that? burning video. Yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. That's a yeah. Uh, that's a West Virginia tradition. So if we pull off the victory. Uh, it, it might not be like, uh, you know, a big catch, but I'll figure out something. I will do it. It will happen. It's going to be some kind of couch. It's not necessarily going to come out of some like uh play set, is it? Right. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. Okay. But it could be uh, maybe, uh, what's the right word? A love seat, something like that. So uh, it, it'll, it'll definitely look like a couch. It'll, it'll have the size and stuff. It just might not be, you know, one of the bigger ones. It's going to be a good video. So we have to beat Minnesota. We have to beat Minnesota. Minnesota, West Virginia, interesting matchup. I will be tuned in and watching. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Even before we launched this channel, college football nerd right here, junkie. So I would be uh, all into that. And uh, Joey, appreciate it. I know you're excited. Thank you so much for bringing us together and your part in all of this. So we are oh, yeah. all excited about uh, getting this together for West Virginia fans and college football fans all together. So get on over there. We're going to drop the link in the live chat and uh, get on over there and subscribe to our new West Virginia channel. Major Wolf. Good evening, Mark and Golden Blue Dude. Where's the next move of conference realignment? Wow. Uh, oh, big that's kind of died down a little bit. Um, I, my sources are still telling me the ACC thing with West Virginia, but – uh, there's nothing hot right now. And Shane Lyons, our administrator, actually, uh, I think he was fielding a question or whatever about that. And, of course, he shot it down saying there's not even an offer from the ACC, which I know for a fact we do, but I don't know if we turned it down. So maybe he's trying to spin it like that. But he said everything that he's supposed to say. Uh, West Virginia to the ACC, definitely not a done deal. Um and West Virginia could turn it down. I hope not, but, you know, we'll see. But as far as what happens next, that's a, um, the biggest name out there that's not already in a Power 5 is Memphis. 
somebody is going to grab Memphis. They have too big of a brand. They have too big of a backer in FedEx, and they do bring eyeballs, and, and they, they're pretty good in both uh, football and basketball. They've gotten much better in football recently, and, of course, they've always been a basketball school. So I definitely see Memphis getting grabbed up by a Power Five uh, in the next year or so. As we get into the offseason, we're going to have plenty of time to talk about uh, 2022 and some big picture stuff involving West Virginia football and uh, the new Big 12 or a possible move to the ACC and all the things that could come uh, very soon or could be long range plans uh, for college football. But uh, since we are launching a West Virginia channel and I want to set the stage for a lot of people that aren't as familiar with the Mountaineers, you know, I said something off the top about a rabid fan base. Uh, a fan base that's uh, larger than most people would probably think. So can you give us some description, some kind of idea of the uniqueness, unique qualities of West Virginia football, the fan base, and so forth? Well, the first thing is there is no professional team in West Virginia. West Virginia University is the professional team of the state. And the reason uh, a lot of people think that it's not a big fan base is they go by the state population, which I think the last time I looked was like 1.8, 1.7 million. That's that's not a lot at all. There's some cities that are much bigger than that. But the, there's a big alumni. There's a big fan base. It's not just the state. I mean, I, I can go down the road. I live in the upstate of South Carolina, and, and if I'm wearing my West Virginia gear, at least a dozen people. Hey, where are you from? Where you know? Are you are you an actual West Virginia fan, or you're just one of those people where it's something to wear? Not no, I'm a West Virginia fan. So there's a lot of us out of there, and West Virginia, we're one of the most diehard fan bases there is. And but the problem with that, what comes with that is whenever there's not success, man, they are mad and they're ready for you know. Even if like this year, we had a down year, six and six, uh, didn't meet expectations. Eight and four was what I was hoping for, what I predicted. And of course, you know, fire Neil Brown, uh, uh, Jarrett Deggy is a, is a piece of crap quarterback, all that stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's severe. And, but then the next game, Jarrett Deggy has a great game. Iowa state, uh, I vividly remember that. And the next day praising him, loving him, hero of the state. So if you have, I promise you, and I hope recruits start watching these videos because I will say this to them. If you have success at West Virginia, you will have a statue made of you. You will be a hero uh, in West Virginia folklore, no matter whether, if you don't go to the NFL, if you don't have success there, um, doesn't matter. You will be a legend at West Virginia and you, you know, great things. It, it, it's a, uh, it's almost, uh, it's almost like uh, a god type of thing. Not quite to that extent, but, man, you'll be a legend. I will say that uh, based on my interactions with college football fans every day, I'm guessing that if we took a poll, if we could uh, send out a questionnaire to your average college football fan or way beyond your average college football fan because we got college football junkies in here but not West Virginia fans – and we asked them certain questions about, you know, who would be the top 15 winning is programs in the history of college football, for example. Yep. You know, name the 15 schools that are top 15 in all time wins. I bet most people would not include West Virginia, number 15 right now, all time yep. in wins. Yep. Uh, last time I checked, we were also uh, top 20 in basketball as well. So West Virginia is actually a pretty successful uh, athletic program, both basketball and football. Uh, but especially on the football side, you know, when you think college football, you don't necessarily think that West Virginia is one of the, you know, all-time greats because we've never won a national championship. And since I've been alive, uh, I'm actually fortunate to have been a West Virginia fan in my particular lifespan because we've had the most success ever since I've been born. Seriously. I did, I did the research uh, before it was horrible. Uh, right after I was born, major boom in the eighties, the 88 national championship, 93 went undefeated. And then of course, 2007, and it's kind of died off a little uh, recently, 
But, man, I've enjoyed some of the greatest West Virginia teams of all times. Now, the problem with West, for, for West Virginia as far as not winning a national championship is the law of averages. We haven't been there enough. Uh, we've only had three opportunities. So when you've only had three opportunities, you better make one of those count. It's not, it's not like Alabama – where, you know, they're getting to the playoffs every stinking year. So they're going to win the national championship one of those years or two of those years or back-to-back, -back, whatever. For West Virginia, we've only had three opportunities. 88, undefeated Notre Dame. Major Harris goes down with an injury, and we lose. 93, we go undefeated, get invited to the Sugar Bowl, and had we won that game, share the national championship, we get blown out 41-7. to And then, of course, in 2007, one game away, I'm not going to say the name. Everybody knows what it is. Everybody knows the score, and we lost that game, and we went to the Fiesta Bowl and absolutely dumped Oklahoma. I am convinced, had we won that last game, we'd have a national championship. I even know the score of that game. Yep, that's a, a legendary score now. Unfortunately for us, on the wrong end. I would push back on a few things here. So first would be... Um, yeah, college football is not the NFL, so it's not objective. There's not an objective playoff system, so people do select who gets the opportunities. So the SEC, for example, has been has won more national championships in the last 15 or 20 years, but has also been given many more opportunities to win national championships. When you have two teams selected for the playoffs, it's easier to win than when you get zero. When you're the Pac-12 and have zero, then it's kind of yep. hard to win a national championship. So but those teams created their opportunities to a certain extent. So it's a little bit of both. They, they put themselves right. in position with dominant play, but also there were close calls to be made by the committee and the committee opted for the Alabamas of the world to get into the playoff. And in the past era before the playoff opted for certain schools to make the BCS championship game over others when there was the, the formula that uh, also played into uh, the AP poll and the, um, coaches poll um yeah. so yeah not given the opportunity also not setting themselves up for the opportunity we we could go year to year on that one and, and try to figure it out i know you had a really good team in 2005 yep. that dumped uh, george in the sugar bowl as yep. well uh in a big upset there that uh surprised a lot of people and uh, we started too far behind in that year we lost to a uh and eh, okay Virginia Tech, and that kind of set us back in the polls. So we kind of put ourselves behind the eight ball. By the time we get to uh, the Sugar Bowl, we're number 11. So even though we only had one loss, we're not even in the top 10. So I would, yes, I would consider 2005 an all-time great team. Uh, but we just started too far behind the eight ball to have a chance at, you know, trying to get to a national championship. And I probably would size up that 2007 Ohio State team against uh, West Virginia as well. We we could we could do that some night. Oh yeah, absolutely. Joey, Joey burnt an entire living room set in 2012 when we beat the snot out of Clemson. Of course, that was uh, oh. 70 points. Geno yeah. Smith and company. Wow, I've never done that. <laughs> That's uh, very interesting. I you know what? I was actually um, I was living here in the upstate when that happened. And a lot of my friends are uh, Clemson fans because I'm about 20 minutes outside of Clemson. So that was a very interesting uh, experience, the, the the jubilee of thumping Clemson, but the depression that surrounds you, you know. It was, uh, you know, I was kind of just walking around trying to be not, not bragging or in your face, but just wearing my collars, letting them know, you know, hey, we owned you just now. Clemson fans have a lot to be grateful for and can thank you for Man. changing their whole football program because of that game. That's what I've told Clemson fans. They're like, yeah, I remember that thumping that y'all gave us uh, in the orange bowl. I was like, who cares? That was, that was 2011. Uh, well, technically in 2012, but I mean, I would trade that. I would take that thumping for two national championships. I mean that nobody even care. I mean, it's something it's nice to talk about, but it's it's not really anything to brag about. I mean, national championships, that's something to brag about. If uh, somebody out there is uh, listening and not necessarily aware, uh, West Virginia and Clemson uh, met in the 2011-2012 Orange Bowl 
and uh, it was Dabo Sweeney's first ACC championship, and West Virginia hung 70 on them, and it could have been 85 or 90, like it was that bad. It was, it was, they they put it on cruise control for the last like quarter and a half, and it was 70, yeah. and it was a over by halftime demolition air raid. And that caused Clemson to go out and get Brent Venables to run their defense. So that I saw, I saw that comment there. Uh, Jeff Grimm says Clemson only wins because they have a Bama boy as their coach. You do realize that Alabama has a West Virginia boy as their head coach, right? Nick Saban from West Virginia. So, you know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Does anyone know where Nick Saban graduated from college? Was it Glenville? Oh, Kent State. Kent State University. Nice. State. He coached there, didn't he? Like as an, uh, assistant, an assistant or something? Assistant coach. He was an yeah, assistant. assistant coach. Yeah. I knew yeah. that. Nick Saban, Lou Holtz graduated from there. Jack Lambert. Others, yeah. Antonio Gates, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the voice of college football graduated from there as well. Nice. I didn't know that either. That's pretty so, cool. Uh, yeah, where, where's that located joined. geographically, Kent State? Uh, where's that Kent located? It's about uh, 45 minutes south of Cleveland. Okay, okay. So you're kind of in the center of Ohio, mm, sort of. Like north, Columbus, northeast. Columbus is in the center. Okay, so you're northeast. Kent is, yeah, northeast, about okay. two hours or a little bit more than that, north of Columbus. Yes. Right. About 15 and who are they playing? Minutes. They're playing somebody in the ball. Who are they playing? This uh, they're playing Wyoming. And don't uh, quiz me on what bowl game that is, but it's coming up, I think, tomorrow. Yeah, I actually, the next pit, couple days. I remember that because I actually uh, picked Kent State to uh, to win that. Hold on, I'm checking something real quick. I think I have that written down. Give me one second here. Maybe not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not looking. Uh, I don't have it written down. I do, but I'm not looking for it. Yeah, but. I think Wyoming is a three-point favorite, but I have Kent State with the upset. Okay, since this is our inaugural West Virginia Mountaineers live show and, and we are launching our new channel with Gold and Blue Dude, so please check it out. I've left the um, link in the live chat, and you, if you can't find it, it's pretty easy in the search engine, I'm sure, on YouTube, Voice of College Football West Virginia. I'm sure you can go right to it and, and find it right there. Uh, since we're getting ourselves familiar with a lot of people out there with uh, the history of West Virginia football, I'm going to throw out a category and no cheating out there because we did throw out the 769 all-time wins, which is number 15 in college football among the 130 FBS teams. I'm going to throw out some other categories and folks leave in the live chat your, your answer on, on these questions. So first we're going to start with, uh, let's start with conference championships. Oh, so as uh golden blue dude told us no national championships in the near misses in 88, 93, 07, et cetera, but conference championships. So understand big 12 for about the past 10 years, big East before that. Uh, that's about as far back as I would yeah. go because when I was around, they were independent before that. college football independent. Yeah. Yep. Uh, as uh, when you were talking about, um, West Virginia not necessarily being as good before you started watching. That's, you know, you're going back to my time, like late <laughs> 70s, early 80s. Don Nealon, you know, yep. he's, he's legendary, legendary in West Virginia football. Jeff Hostetler, a quarterback those years. Yep. Uh, I got familiar with West Virginia when they were riding high, doing well. Yep. And so uh, they were. By the way, six is way off. Six is way off. Not even close. Six is, is, pretty far off i'm looking at the number right here and uh if any if i spit out any of these stats uh chris and you know a little bit better than uh you know chime in because we know how college football stats are with certain certain things certainly national championships everybody's got their interpretation of what is what but we're counting up conference championships for a program that's been in the big 12 for 10 years independent going or big east going back to about Probably about um, sometime in the in the sixties or fifties, went to me, or before that. Uh, that they were an independent. Yeah, because weren't they in the Southern there for a while? Sure. So they, yeah, they yeah. were like in the Southern Conference, independent for a long, long time. I don't know, uh, going back to when, and then they went to uh, the Big East. I'm guessing in when the Big East was formed, or was a yeah, little I later think that than was that. In the eighties, honestly, people don't realize. 
uh, West Virginia was only in the Big East for 20 some years. That's not very long. And uh, I don't even Big know 12, if it was that long. They yeah, were- it might not even be that long. And we've, we've already been in the Big 12 for uh, 10 years. But the thing is, we played a lot of our rivals before we were in the Big East, like uh, Pitt and Virginia Tech. We've played them forever. So um, it was this last conference realignment that really hurt that because before the, it didn't matter what conference you were in, you were going to play your rivals no matter what. So, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed West Virginia being in the Big East. We had a lot of success. And don't, do not, a lot of people point out, the reason West Virginia hasn't had a lot of success in the Big 12 is because it's tougher, more competition. Go back to the older Big East. I'm telling you, it was pretty loaded. Syracuse was good back then. Of course, Miami, the Hurricanes, they were legendary. Back then, I mean, you can, uh, you could compare them to Alabama this day. That's how good they were. Um, Boston College, Doug Flutie, and even Matt Ryan at one point, uh, pretty good. And then, of course, uh, Virginia Tech had some really good years. There was '99 under uh, with uh, Michael Vick and national champion runner-up, lost to Florida State. So, don't knock the Big East. It was a pretty good conference. Uh, now they're towards the very, very, very end. You know, Virginia Tech, Syracuse, Boston College, uh, Miami, all those left. Then it kind of got watered down. It was still decent because we brought in, like, uh, Louisville. Cincinnati was in the Big East for a little bit. People forget. So it was decent, but it wasn't what it was. So, no, yeah. it's not that. It's West Virginia doesn't fit in the Big 12. We just don't. It's a Midwest conference. Now, I'm glad. I, I do like that we brought in uh, UCF and Cincinnati, but that that's, that's two teams that fit in with us. So – uh, it, it's not. I'm not saying the travel necessarily. I'm saying the fit. It doesn't fit. People don't want to play for a team if they don't get to play in front of their friends and family. You commit to West Virginia, and you're from Virginia, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Georgia, and most of your way games. Well, pretty much all your way games are in the Midwest. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, what about my family? What about my friends? Uh, so it makes it makes recruiting more difficult. Uh, of course, it makes the games more difficult because travel does start to wear on you towards the end of the season. And we're still considered kind of the stepchild. We're, we're part of the family, but, you know, uh, us first and come on in. You know, I mean, we're part of the family, but still kind of looked as outsiders. Yeah. So I would go beyond stepchild. Stepchild is part of the family. Outsiders is what I would say. Outsiders, that it's that's part of the group. You also know that you're not necessarily ingrained in the conference and a good fit when, so take, take any of the other teams from the Midwest in the big 12. And if you look at top recruits or any recruits really in the footprint, if they don't go to, let's say there's a candidate to go to Oklahoma. Well, yep. if he doesn't go to Oklahoma, he's got Texas and Texas A&M, which used to be in the Big 12, so I understand they're not anymore, but still, it's 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 a regional thing because they're they're going to most likely, unless they're national recruits, like five stars that are looking at Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, and they're one of those guys, they're basically looking at a region. So if they don't go to Oklahoma, they're going to go to Oklahoma State. If they don't go to Kansas State, they're going to go to, you know, they're going to go to Missouri. Again, I understand it's the SEC, but it's within this region. Or they're going to go to Texas Tech, or they're going to go to TCU. Yep. Like, if a if a uh, top player in West Virginia is either considering West Virginia, they're not, like, considering West Virginia and Oklahoma and Iowa State and, right. you know, TCU. No, they, they're considering West Virginia, Virginia yeah. Tech, Penn State, Maryland, you know, so – it kind of isolates it from a recruiting standpoint too. Yes, exactly. You explained it perfectly. And even though the big 12 added Cincinnati and UCF, they also added BYU. So that stretches more West. Now I realize we'll probably go to the two uh, divisions and we might have to travel to BYU maybe every four years, every six years, something like that. But I mean, that's still, that's, that's uh, a longer distance. And uh, another big brand to compete with, with recruiting. That's, an, that's another big thing. It's become a super powered conference USA. So conference USA yeah. made its name out of 
a bunch of different conferences needing to survive. And part of that was the Big East uh, branching off and, and there was there was survival mode. And so they branched together and suddenly there was this hodgepodge for the first time. There had always been conferences that were very regionally centric. So and for the yeah. first time you had con a conference that was all over the place. So they looked at it and said, you know, we're going to brand ourselves Conference USA because that's what we are. We're all over the place. Well, yeah. that's what the Big 12 is looking like. They're looking like a super Conference USA. Yeah. When you look at it on the map, you're like, what am I looking at? Like, I did a video on my other channel, Golden Blue, about it. And I showed the map. I'm like, when you look at the map, it already looks crazy. But watch whenever I show this. And I circled the core the you know the midwest and then i drew out these tentacles to west virginia cincinnati and then i drew out a tentacle down to ucf and then i drew out a little tentacle to byu and that really shows you the aspect of it it's it's all over the place there's not really any i don't know there's no rhyme or reason when you look at it it's just a conference that's it okay so before i look at this i'm going to quiz myself on where west virginia's been in conference play. So we know the Big 12 ever since the uh, trashing of Clemson, that was the final game in the Big East, correct? That so is they won correct. the Big East, they killed Clemson, the ACC champ in the Orange Bowl of 2011, the 2011 season. So the Big 12 would be 2012 to today. So right. the Big East, I'm going to guess. So I know that West Virginia was an independent still when they played Notre Dame for the national championship in the Fiesta Bowl. So that was in 88, the 88 season. So sometime after that, the Big East formed around 90-ish. So yep. I'm going to go like 91. The core of the Big East was Miami, Virginia Tech, Syracuse, Pitt, West Virginia. And then later it became at different times, Temple jumped in and obviously UConn later and and so forth and so on. But that that was the core. The core that could play football was West Virginia, Miami, Syracuse, Virginia Tech. Pitt. Didn't uh didn't Penn State briefly jump in before they got to the Big Ten? I no. thought they did. I might be wrong, but for some reason I'm thinking it was only a handful of years, but uh, I, I would not mortgage my house on this answer, but I would come close to it. I, I might bet my car that the answer is no. <laughs> Yeah, I, I believe they went straight from the independent status. Now, before that, I, as you mentioned, the Southern Conference, I'm not going to, I I would just be simply guessing uh, when they were in the Southern Conference from the beginning of their football program or near the beginning of their football program to, I'm going to guess like the mid 60s, 70s, something like that. And then independent yeah. status somewhere around 1970 to 91. Okay, let's see. So they were an independent to start out, which makes sense. Everybody was an independent <laughs> when they started out. Okay. So then they were in the, they were in the West Virginia IAC, whatever that is for a couple of years Whoa. in the twenties, the 1920s. And then they were in the Southern conference from 1950 to 67. Okay. I was off by three okay. years, 1967. They were, then they, they were independent from 67 to 91. Okay. Big East. I nailed it. 91 to 11. Okay. There you go. Okay. So there's your uh, conference affiliation for West Virginia all time. Conference yeah. championships, folks. So we got a number of guesses in here and we got West Virginia. So understand that they were only in, in the Big East for 20 years. Yep. Only right 20, at 20 years. years. In the East and only 10 years in the. Um, Man, that's crazy. Big 12. Wow. And then the Southern Conference was only, that was only 17 years. So yeah. not a lot of years to win conference championships there. And they've won 15. Yeah. Won 15 conference championships. Well, so we've we dominated through. that conference for a while. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no national championships. No. Nope. Uh, would anyone want mm -hmm. to guess folks in the live chat? What West Virginia's all time winning percentage is. Oh. I understand if you're not into winning percentages, if you win one and lose one, if you're exactly even, that's 500. I have so a roundabout. I think I know the number. I think I know the number. I'm looking at the number, and uh, you can you can guess the percentage, and you can guess how high that ranks in college football among the 130 
FBS teams. They're number close. 15 all time in wins. Close, Big Dog. Close. Big Dog is the closest. Got uh, Joey. Sorry, That's Joey. 63. Big Dog's still the closest. Hey, Swampy McGee, none of that. None of that. None of that. You're killing us. You're oh, killing man. Swampy McGee. None of this. I was gonna, uh, I, my number was 59.6%. Oh, man. Yep. You know, if they lose this bowl game, you might be dead on. According to Winsipedia, 597. 597. So, Golden Blue Dude, dead on there. We had some uh, guesses. 73%. You're talking. 73%. That's insane. That's that, insane. Yeah, that's uh, that's like number one. Like Ohio State and Alabama are battling for number one. They're virtually like tied at like 73%. That's like number yeah. one status. We're not Alabama. We're No, no, no. Not even close. Uh, uh, Ohio State and Alabama are like so close. It like changes uh, practically by the week. And Michigan uh, had it for a while. Yes, they did. So they've lost the winning percentage. They've got the all-time wins. Anybody yep. else close? Justin chiming in with uh, a little troll action there at 28%. Joey, 63, oh, a little high. On, Lewis, 67%. Uh, SEC dog, yeah, 18%. Yeah, big dog Brett's here. Appreciate you being here at 60%. Nice guess. That You're was right a good there. guess. That's that's the one that I said got the closest. Uh, uh -huh. but Gamecock Chuck, man, I appreciate the guess. 73%, man. That I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's insane, but I like it. Uh, I wish. Yeah, that would I understand be that 73% doesn't sound amazing when when you're thinking about like one season, you go seven and three, that's 70%. But right. think all time, that's that's crazy. Good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, that's yeah, insane. To keep up that insane pace. Minutes. I would say uh if I had to put a number, I would say 55% and above, you're you're doing really, really good. You're you're having a pretty good historical program. Uh now you don't want to do that every year. Go fit, you know, that's like what six uh seven and five, seven and five. No, you don't want to do yeah, that every year. You're gonna have bad years. Strange. So you want it to even out, but I would say fit fifty-five percent and above, uh, you're a good football program. That's what I would say. Uh, Minnesota's at 572. That's not bad. Not bad. It's 44th. West Virginia is 27th. That's top. They were, uh, they, I knew at one point they were 25. So that was going to be my guess, 25. So, uh, I think that these past couple of years of struggling, uh, bumped us down a few spots, but we'll be all right. We'll bounce back. I will ask this next question simply like this. Has West Virginia ever won a Heisman Trophy? Leave your leave your answer in there. Anybody? Anybody on the Heisman Trophy? Thought you were asking me. <laughs> I know. I didn't set that up too well. Oh man! All right. Wishful. Justin, we're just kidding. Look like look like you were trolling at twenty eight percent, Justin. Now come on. That's trolling. That's trolling. Come on. Yes. Justin says yes. he wasn't. Everybody knows that. Uh, Dependent like, Fanatic says Michigan's about to get the percentage back. Well, that's going to take some work. It's going to take a little bit of work. It'll but take a few years. Good, good. They, they're, they're right there. And then, oh uh, yeah, they, yeah. Of course, yeah. you got a pit fan. Got a pit fan. I'm surprised he didn't say negative something. So I, I, I think that's a good comment from him. All right. So here we go with uh, yes, never a Heisman Trophy at West Virginia. Nope. I got to think Pat White close, Major Harris close. Closest. Closest, Major Harris. Yeah. Sam Huff. Sam Huff. Yeah. yeah that's he was going close. Back. New York Giants legend. Yeah, he was uh, – He people uh, – I know that's not a household name, but uh, – Oh, it is in my household. Yeah, well, but I'm telling you, that, that dude was – insane he's sure. one of the few that has got his uh numbers um uh, yeah. retired at west virginia he's an all-time great yep. um i gotta think that i gotta think that there were some guys that weren't like super super close but in the top 10 like Tavian austin Tavon or... austin noel divine i would say um steve noel slayton divine. steve, steve slayton, slayton for sure hostetler i would say hostetler yeah. yeah for sure um Maybe uh, I would say Will Greer to some degree. Maybe not top ten, but 
Close. Yeah, well, I would say stop top 20 for Will Greer. Um, what was his crazy good year? Was that 17? 18. 18. 18. Yeah. 2018, the year before uh, Neil Brown came. So, uh, man, that dude has a cannon for an arm. I, I remember watching that Texas game, and he threaded that thing uh, right before the, the outline on the end zone. And then, of course, we went for two, and then he ran it. So he threw one, and then he ran the two-point in. That that was clutch right there. That was insane. You're going to like this. Will Greer in 2018 finished fourth. I knew he was up there. I knew he was top, top five at least. He had a great, great season. Uh, besides that, um, let's see, in my lifetime, I would say Mark Bulger. Bulger, uh, yeah. he was pretty good. He had a, he actually had a pretty decent uh, NFL, NFL career. career. Yeah, yeah. Amos Zaraway, I liked Amos him. Amos Uh Let's see. There's a bunch of others. I just can't place them. But yeah, I, that that's I'm listing my childhood. To be honest with you, that's that's my childhood right there. Uh, those are my guys, man. I'm I'm gonna get them on my uh, on my channel. So uh, we'll we'll get that done. Oh, Pat White. He uh, he now has yeah. a uh, coaching position now. So there you go, Pat. Uh, short NFL career, but you know it's all right. Um, so real quick, I wanted to go through the um, the recruiting class. Is that all right with you? Yes, absolutely. All right. So um, two four seven, which does composite, they kind of add everything together and then give you here's the average so we're at 32 but if you factor in the transfers we're a top 30 class i would say 27 maybe 26 um the last minute signees that we were not expecting that helped uh with the losses of justin williams and kevin thomas um i'd say lee and i can't say his last name but i'll spell it and that's k p o g b a i think it's pogba lee pogba the linebacker he's a four star that was unexpected. I didn't even know he was on our radar. And we got the JUCO transfer, Hershey McLaurin. Some sites have him as a three-star. Some sites have him as a four-star. So it really doesn't matter. That's a pretty good That's a pretty good pickup. So I like it. And then the, the one that wasn't a surprise that I was like, wow, that's that's really good for West Virginia. Um, Lynn J. Dixon. The running back from Clemson transferring to West Virginia, that one surprised me. Now, 247 has him as a three-star as a transfer, but out of high school, he was a high-end four-star. And I think the only reason that they downgraded him to a three-star is because he didn't have a good season this past season. But the thing is, they didn't play him much because he was having issues in the locker room. So if he can get his attitude fixed, he has big play capabilities. That's why I'm excited not worried. I'm excited about the running game coming in uh, 2022. Now, the names that headline the 2022 recruiting class, of course, quarterback Nico Marchio, four-star, high-rated quarterback, one of the highest-rated uh, recruits that we've had. We've had some five-stars, but this guy is – he's dynamic. People are, ta are, are talking about him as in could be a program changer. Now, I would I – would, Push back on that by saying this: He's a true he's a true freshman, guys. So don't expect him to play every game. In fact, I think that he will play. He, he might start the four games and not burn the red shirt. And don't count Jarrett Deggy out. Yes, he had a down year this year, but our offensive line was a train wreck, and we had no run support. I actually expect Jarrett Deggy to have a bounce back year. And Nico Markio uh, will not have all that much pressure as far as you know. We gotta we gotta turn this team around this year. So I think he'll he'll play more of a uh, you know looking up to his mentor Jarrett Nagy, but then he'll take the reins and West Virginia. Well, sky's the limit with this guy, and he's been helping West Virginia recruit. Another guy that I'm truly excited for, cornerback Jacoby Spells, four star. We stole this guy from Miami. Uh, that one blew my mind because I thought in the beginning of his recruitment, I thought he was going to Miami. Then I started to see those percentages switch. So I made a video and I predicted him to pick West Virginia and Miami fans were saying, no, he's picking Miami. I'm like guys, I'm 
telling you, it was a big steal. That's why they weren't believing me because it was that's a big deal for West Virginia. Nice steal. Um, quarterback Mumu Bin Wahad. Now he's a three star, but in my opinion, this guy's a four star. I think the reason why he's rated a three a three star is because maybe athletically he's not a four star, but this guy is super football smart. If you watch tape of him, he knows where to be, when to be, how to read the quarterback. How to read routes. This dude, this dude can read routes before they even run. They say he's a uh, he's uh, obsessed with patterns. He looks at patterns, and he can almost predict what, what route a particular receiver will run based on who they're playing for, what formation it is, and what part of the game it is. So the dude studies the game. I think he's a four-star. He's rated as a three-star, so we got to go with that. Linebacker Raleigh Collins, uh, the third, three-star, but he's going to give us really good depth. There's not going to be a big drop-off as far as losing guys like we did last year. That's the thing that I, I'm really excited for. And we still had a pretty good defense. West Virginia had a pretty good defense. Not elite like it was last year, but pretty good. So I think our defense will be better. Maybe we can get back to that elite status. Uh, I know um, Hakeem Mesador, he'll be back in a lot of other key pieces because we had transfers from the Dana Holgerson era. We only had them for two years, and then they were gone. We had that. Uh, we had the guy from Arizona. I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but he was a big-time factor um, in the 2021 season. We lost him and didn't take that big a step back. That's not going to happen this year. We're not losing key players – like Tyke Smith transferring to Georgia, uh, Jershawn Miller transferring to Auburn. That's not happening this year. So I expect our defense to be even better. Uh, the big thing we need to worry about is not the quarterback. That's not West Virginia's problem. And I know Jarrett Deggy has missed some reads, blah, blah, blah. Hey, quarterbacks do that. It happens. It's a running game. Now, we lose Letty Brown. That's okay because uh, Tony Mathis – has looked great in these past three games. And we get Lynn J. Dixon. He's the guy that I'm truly excited about. So I think our running game is is the thing that's going to really improve. Uh, we got a lot of depth on the on the offensive line now because we got we got Maurice Hamilton, Charlie uh Kat, Katarinzik, uh Landon Livingston, Sullivan Weidman, all of those high end three star uh offensive linemen. So uh our offensive line is going to be salty next year. Uh, it's going to be much better. And our run support, which is what really hurt us this year. I mean, that's what hurt us. Uh, like I said before, Letty Brown only went over 100 yards four times. We won every single game when he went over 100 yards. So here's how I label Jarrett Nagy. He is not good enough to put the team on his back and win the game. But he is good enough to not lose the game if he has the necessary uh, backup, like the running game, offensive line, wide receivers not dropping the ball. If everybody else does what they're supposed to do, he won't lose the game for you. But he's not good enough to put the game on his shoulders and win it for you. That's how I would characterize Jarrett Nagy. Good stuff from Golden Blue Dude on uh, West Virginia's class, which uh, ranked uh, as Cousy's uh, Corner let us know number twenty-two in Rivals, number thirty-two in the two four seven Sports Composite. But yep. hey, it's a new ranking system these days. If you really want to be accurate, as uh, Golden Blue Dude was letting us know about, uh, you really need to take the transfer portal into consideration. Look at the additions and the losses. Is there an official ranking out there where somebody is actually doing that? Rivals. That's what Rivals okay, does. Okay, Rivals is doing that. Yeah. Okay. They counted all the all the transfers. That's why in 247, now they might have updated, but the last time I saw at 247, um, they only had West Virginia with two stars. We got three stars, uh, two four stars, but really we have three four stars because of a transfer. Um, so, yeah, it, it does need to be accounted for, and it, it matters because, no, you didn't recruit him, like, out of high school – but you recruited him through the transfer portal, and that still counts, and he's still going to contribute. It's not like uh, you got a coach, so you can't count that towards recruiting. You know, 
He's a player. He's going to play. You have to count it. Or you could have two separate rankings. But what really matters? Yeah. What matters is how much better is the team or how much worse is the team. That's the real number. So you should include right. transfers. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate everybody being here uh, at the Voice of College Football. We're so excited about our new West Virginia channel. Head on over there. I left the link in the live chat. Uh, somebody commented that uh, it's not posted on my channel in regards to all my team channels. Yeah, I have not done that yet. I need to do that. So I, I will get to that. But uh, it should be easy to find for a few different reasons. Just put Voice of College watching the West infancy Virginia. right here. That's why. you Guys, you're watching history. You're watching the infancy. Uh, but I promise you, uh, me and Mark, Mark and I, we will, we will do everything we can to get this thing going. And, uh, I have a high expectations because, um, you know, I, I know how rabid this fan base is and they're hungry for a voice. Now I give them a voice through golden blue dude, but I also talk about all of college football. This is going to be West Virginia, uh, specific. So I, I'm really excited about it. Absolutely. And we appreciate our guy, Joey. Thank you so much for being here, for being a, a supporter of uh, Golden Blue Dude for a long, long, long time and uh, jumping on and helping me as well, supporting me. And uh, I want to say this real quick about him. I would say as far as related to my channel and, of course, now this channel, which is, I'll, I'm going to say it's my channel as well, um, Joey was the best decision as far as uh, bringing him on board uh, you know, helping out with the channel. Best decision I ever made. This guy has, uh, he, he talks to everybody. He's very enthusiastic about West Virginia. He's all about Golden Blue Dude. Uh, he's all about the channel, and he's going to help this. I, I have no doubts in my, in my mind. He's going to help this channel grow. Here's an example real quick. So it took me a year and a half to get to 1,000. I got to 1,000 back in May, early May, late April, something like that. I brought him on right around that time. Thousand, year and a half. Now we're almost at 5,000. And that's like six months, five months, something like that. And it's because this guy busts his rear end to get my name out there. And, you know, even he's my connection to you. He's the one that, you know, reached out to you and said, you know, hey, can go to Blue Dude have you on his show? Can can you have him on, on your show? And then now this channel is getting started. So he he deserves a, a, a lot of credit. He does a lot of work behind the scenes. Absolutely, he does. He uh, is one of those people that brings other people together. Exactly. Absolutely. And he's not, this is not a, uh, this is not a, a fleeting thing or, a, you know, oh, I'll get to, it. no, me and Joey talk every day and he's uh, he's all about this every single day. Um, you already know I put out videos every day, but this guy, he's not he's not the the face of it, but he's the machine of it. And he does that every day as well. So a lot of credit goes to Joey. He's uh, he's helped out tremendously. Best decision I made for for my channel and no doubt for this channel as well. Everything and more of what you just said. Absolutely. Absolutely. On all accounts. All right. Is there anything else we want to hit on or if we wrapped it up for the night? One more thing. Sure. What, now I'm not asking for like an in-depth or anything like that, but from what you've seen this year and from what I've tried to explain through the uh, recruiting class, any roundabout prediction for next year, as far as uh, what kind of record we could see. Who's the big non-conference game next year? Uh, we have a road trip to Pitt and a road trip to Virginia Tech. That's right. We talked about this, and uh, when I looked up West Virginia's schedule for 2022, I was mighty impressed taking on the two power fives. Not a lot of teams do that. Both taking rivals. Two, two quality power fives, Virginia Tech, Pitt, Pitt on the road, minus Kenny Pickett, Jordan Addison, and others. Hmm. I think we have a better chance of beating uh... – Pitt, to be honest with you, because they lose a lot from this year. Yeah. And, you know, Virginia Tech wasn't that great, but Dad Gummit, they tried to come back and beat us, and it took a fourth and goal to stop Virginia Tech. So 
if I have to say, if I have to pick which one will lose and which one will win, uh, I think we beat Pitt and lose to Virginia, to Virginia Tech if it has to be that way. Now, preferably, I want to win both. But as far as likelihood, if we win one and lose one, I would say beat Pitt, lose to Virginia Tech. And, of course, I would prefer that as well. <laughs> Beating Pitt as a West Virginia fan is always fun. Joey's Ooh, looking 10 at 10-2 and and or maybe 9-3. and three. I'm was, thinking more 7-5, and 8-4. and four, That's where uh, I was, 7-5, and 5-4 five, five and four in the conference. But, gonna... you know, hold on, hold on, hold on. But I have to say this. So we went 6-6 six and six this year, right? But four of those losses were 50-50 football games. So now – I look at 10 and 3 and 9 and 3. I'm like, that's that's a big step. I don't know about that, but hold on, hold on. Let's think about this for a second. If we figure out how to win 50 50 football games, we're looking at a 10 and 2 season this year. And maybe we can figure that out. And I think West Virginia will actually be a better team uh, athletically, recruiting wise, uh, growing up, uh, you know, that offensive line maturing a little bit more. Nine and three might not be out of the realm of possibility. Ten and two is a little bit of a stretch, but you know, even if we figure out how to win those 50 50 football games, because that's what killed us. Um, especially losing to Texas Tech. That that killed the momentum of the season. I firmly believe if we would have beat Texas Tech, we'd be looking at an eight and four season this year. So if we can figure that out, that's actually not out of the realm of possibility. The thing I'll say about that though is that um Yes, Oklahoma was the last second field goal loss on the road to a team that's top 12 or 15 in the nation. The Texas Tech game you mentioned, 23-20. That was that ridiculous field goal that went like 80 yards. Didn't go 80 yards, but it was 62 or 3 or yeah. something crazy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was yelling at the screen because uh, I knew what Texas Tech were doing. They were milking the clock to kick the last second field goal. And I was telling, I was yelling at the screen, just let them score a touchdown now. A loss is a loss. It doesn't matter if you get beat by seven or three. At least you have time. If you let them score a touchdown, at least you have time. They milk the clock down to two seconds and kicked a field goal. And, you know, I, I knew it was going to happen. I, I was watching it happen. Sorry, go ahead. I had to, I had to throw that in there. Sure. Uh, but I'm going to play devil's advocate because while you're looking at the losses – Maryland by a score, Oklahoma we just talked about, Texas Tech we just talked about, and um, Kansas State. It wasn't by one score, but we were a fourth down conversion away from uh, tying it. Okay. I'm also looking at Texas was a one-score win, yep. Iowa State a one-score win, Virginia and Tech. Virginia Tech, of course, stopped inside the five-yard line at the end of the game. Right. So three and four and 50-50s. Okay. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. The odds say you're going to go three and four or four and three. Uh, good teams should go. I'm When I say good, I mean fringe top 25 good. Go five and two in those games. Yep. I and you're eight and four. There's your eight and four. Yep. All right. That, that's it. Well done. All uh, I like this one comment. Nick, uh, Seamer cough. He says, can West Virginia recruit good enough to contend for the conference championship? Um, yes, but it helps that Oklahoma is leaving. If Oklahoma stays, I would say if we're lucky, uh, especially when we get them in Morgantown, but since Oklahoma is leaving, absolutely. West Virginia recruits well enough with Neil Brown, not Holgerson. He was crap to contend for a big 12 championship. Yes. I would say yes. So what this does with Cincinnati, BYU, Houston, and UCF minus Texas and Oklahoma. So we know what's happened to Texas in the last 10 years, but they still have all the money and the facilities and everything else and the recruiting. They just haven't played it on the field except for one decent year when they lost the Sugar Bowl. Uh, Georgia, Oklahoma's I mean, been Georgia. a consistent top five team. Right. They're, they're losing quality there, but the conference is becoming deeper with four quality additions, this could be a free for all. You could have like, so we're going to have 12 teams in the conference. You could have like nine or 10 
like really solid, good programs. It could be like how the Big 12 is in basketball right now. The Big 12 almost has no bad teams in basketball. Uh, that's how – now, there might not be an elite team in the bunch, but you could have, like you said, seven, eight, nine really, really good, you know, top 25 teams in the, in the Big 12. I agree with that 100%. Uh, BYU's brand is amazing. Cincinnati is hot. I know, uh, you know, they're not – their brand isn't all that big, and man, they really need to expand that stadium. That's uh, a small stadium for Cincinnati. I was surprised forty thousand. That's not big enough. Uh, but I don't know if they have the room, so they need to work on facilities. That's what Cincinnati needs to work on, and their brand. UCF, uh, decent brand. Houston just invested a ton of money into uh, football facilities and a stadium. Not necessarily a strong brand, so it seems like each team is bringing something really, really good, but from a different, you know, none of them have it all together. BYU has the brand. Houston, you know, poured in the money. Cincinnati is red hot right now, and then UCF is somewhere in between. Uh, maybe Cincinnati is the closest to having everything all together because they are in the playoffs. But uh, I don't think their brand is as strong as it needs to be. And I think the Big 12 will help with that as well. My suggestion for the ACC at the time before the Big 12 went and got UCF was they were my school. They were my target as there's the group of five that they've already shown that they're dedicated to football. They want to win. They're dedicated to football. 2017, 2018 showed us that they can play with the big boys when they pull it all together. Number two, they play in the best, arguably, along with Texas, the best high school football playing state in the country. So they got all that recruiting right there. Number three, they play with NIL, Disney, Disney, Ooh. Orlando. Yeah. UCF has a, a lot of advantages. Um, and a huge alumni base. Yeah, like there. I think they have the university. biggest. They have the biggest yeah. uh, on-campus student body in the yes. nation, don't they? Yes. People don't realize that it's a big university. It really is. They need to UCF. And this is going to sound a little nuts, but I think UCF is a few great decisions away from being a brand like Texas. I, I see that they, but they have to commit to football. They have to commit to it and be willing to put the money into it. The resources are there. Uh, they're in the right state. They have a huge student body. Uh, it, it's time to put your money where your mouth is, uh, as the old saying goes. Folks, please head on over to our new West Virginia channel. So if you're watching this on the main channel, the Voice of College Football, we've got a new channel that is uh, is uh, spearheaded by Golden Blue Dude. We're going to have some other contributors on there as well. And head on over there. Please subscribe. If you love West Virginia football, it goes without saying. But even if you're not you a Mountaineer yeah. fan, if you just love college football and want to support Golden Blue Dude and myself, head on over there and give us a sub. And what was that? I missed it. I said, if you're a West Virginia fan, you have to subscribe to this channel. It's your duty. It is your duty. And from here on out, if you're born in the great state of West Virginia, this is this is going to be this. I'm going to try to get this legislated. So, uh, yeah, it's your duty. Let's do this. Get this passed through the legislature. There we go. There we go. Golden Blue Dude, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate this. We're looking forward to this. I'm excited. Me Can't too. wait to get this. And we are officially launched. We are rolling officially, and I'm already excited. I think this was a great show, and I think it'll get even better. Folks, it did hit me that next Friday night is Christmas Eve, so we will figure out what That's we're going to do. That's my birthday, by the way. Pardon me? That's my birthday, by the way. Your birthday is Christmas Eve. Yeah. So I definitely won't be doing a show uh, on Christmas Eve. There you go. So we'll for various reasons, Golden Blue Dude and myself will not be doing a show on Christmas Eve. and uh, so, But we're going to make... Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, our destination. So lock it in for that. Due to holidays, due to other things that may pop up from time to time, 
Uh, we may need to switch up the schedule from time to time, but that's why you subscribe and hit that bell for the notifications to know when we go live. Exactly. All right, everyone. We appreciate you. Joey, you know you're number one on our list. Thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Golden Blue Dude, this is going to be fun. Appreciate it. Great first show, man. I had fun, man. I appreciate it.